hey, I thought it might be fun to do a special Monday episode of this video pod because some stuff's happened over the weekend. Namely, I wanted to talk about this interview with Representative Nancy Mace gave to George Stephanopoulos on Sunday. I thought it was interesting and worth your time. And I've got some clips, so let's go to it. And you've endorsed Donald Trump for president. Mm -hmm. uh, judges and two separate juries have found him liable for rape and for defaming the victim of that rape. How do you square your endorsement of Donald Trump with the testimony we just saw? Well, I will tell you, I was raped at the age of 16. Um, and any rape victim will tell you, I've lived for 30 years with a, an incredible amount of shame over being raped. I didn't come forward because of that judgment and shame that I felt. And um, it's a shame that you will never feel, George. And I'm not going to sit here on your show and be asked a question meant to shame me about another uh, potential rape victim. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. It's, it's actually not about shaming you. It's a so look. I think Nancy Mace is very smart. She's a talented propagandist, and uh, she is accusing George Stephanopoulos of shaming her. But he's not shaming her to the degree that he is. Uh, for being a rape victim, if he's shaming her, it's for being a political hack and a hypocrite, what, for being someone who is endorsing a man who has been found liable of sexual assault um, for president. So, but look, uh, I think it, to a certain degree it works, right? She's casting herself uh, as a victim and accusing this guy who's trying to ask her questions of being of shaming her. So anyway, it, it, it goes on from there. Question about Donald No, you Trump. are shaming You've me. You've endorsed Donald Trump for president. Right. Donald Trump has been found liable for rape by a jury. Donald Trump has been found liable for defaming the victim of that rape by a jury. It's been affirmed by a judge. It was he not a criminal the... court case, was... number one. Number two, I live with shame. And you're asking me a question about my political choices, trying to shame me as a rape victim, and I find it disgusting. And quite frankly, E. Jean Carroll's comments when she did get the judgment, joking about what she was going to buy, it doesn't. It, it makes it harder for women to come forward when they make a mockery out of rape, when they joke about it. Doesn't it's not, it make it's it harder okay. for women to come forward when they? It are makes it harder when other women candidates. joke about it, and she's joked about it. I find it offensive, and I also find it offensive that you're trying to shame me with this question. I'm not trying to shame you. You are. Well. In fact, I, I have dealt you. with. So, if you ask someone, a why? Why are you, you? You've had this experience. Why are you endorsing someone? Uh, who has been found liable for, for doing this horrible thing, you are shaming them. But Nancy Mace can go after E. Jean Carroll. And that's not shaming an alleged victim, someone who actually you know, has been found to have won in this uh, civil trial. Um, anyway, it goes on from there. We're not going to play the whole thing. We, we just don't have the time. But you will see that this is a tactic and that these buzzwords and talking points get repeated over and over ad nauseum. This is for 30 years. You know how hard it was to tell my story five years ago when they were doing a fetal heartbeat bill and there were no exceptions for rape, incest, or, light, or in, rape or incest in there? I had to tell my story because no other woman was coming uh, forth. No rape victims were represented. And you're trying to shame me this morning. I'm just asking And I find it offensive, and this is why women won't come forward. Women won't come forward because they're defamed by those who perpetrate rape. Donald they Trump are judged and they're shamed. And you're trying to shame me this morning. I'm, I'm I think not, it's disgusting. I'm not shaming you at all. I, I told you my courageous. story. It took me 25 years to tell my story. I was judged for it. I still get judged for it today. I'm asking you a very simple question. It, and I answered Explain it. You're why, shaming no, me for I'm my not, political I'm, choices. I'm asking you a question about why you endorse someone who's been found liable for rape. Just it was not a criminal court. This was this it was, was a, a civil court. It was a civil court. And by rape. the way, she joked about the judgment and what she was going to do with all that money. And I find that offensive. I'm asking you but about as the a rape victim who's been shamed for years now because of her rape, you're trying to shame me again by asking you've, me this you've political question. That so I don't know who's shaming Nancy Mace for being raped. She's being asked a question. How could you, with that experience, endorse a man who has been uh, found liable? of sexual assault. And the judge in that case said it is tantamount to rape. Um, I think that's a legitimate question. I think you should be allowed to ask someone who's in the political arena, not a, not a rando, but someone who's a member of Congress. I think they should 
it's fair game to ask him that question and for her to uh, say that he's trying to shame her. I think she's attempting to shut down discussion, shut down debate, shut down inquiry. And frankly, it's pretty effective uh, as a woman, I think, to say that to a man. Uh, kudos to Stephanopoulos, I think, who uh, wasn't rattled by that. A lot of people would be. Uh, and I think he he did a good job. He did ask her something that was a little different. Um, and let's go to that. That is offensive to women who've been raped. What you've done this morning is offensive. We'll, we'll let the viewers decide about that. Uh, let's talk about January 6th. You had just been sworn into Congress on January 6th. You voted to certify the election. And you said Donald Trump must be held accountable for the violence right after the riot. Let's show that. We've got to hold not only the president accountable um, and ensure that he doesn't hold office again in the future, but also we need to hold members of our of our Congress, even in my own party, accountable for the rhetoric and the actions that led up to Wednesday's events. You said he should never hold office again. So why are you supporting his run for president? Well, I listened to my voters. I listened to my voters in South Carolina, and they've moved beyond J January 6th. I said my piece on January 6th. I was, uh, I was very clear about how I felt about it. And I also, as you sa stated, I voted to certify the Electoral College for every single state in the country. Um, but uh, something's happened between now and then, and that was Joe Biden. And I listened to my voters. They move on. They don't, they don't ask me about January 6th. Maybe that's what you and the media, you guys talk about in your cocktail parties. All right, let's stop it there for one second. The cocktail party thing is such a cheap, cheap get out of jail free card. Uh, but let's go back to what she just said. She said something like, I listen to my voters. I think that is actually true. I think she listened to her voters and they told her, we don't want you to stand on principle. We don't want you to stand on character. We want you to get in line with Donald Trump. And if you don't get in line with Donald Trump, we will find someone else who will. Uh, I think she's actually being honest there. Parties, but voters are not talking about it. They asked me about February 22nd, the day that Lake and Riley was murdered by an illegal immigrant. They asked me about October 8th, the day that Maddie Hines, a South Carolina girl, four-year-old girl murdered by an illegal immigrant who was deported under Donald Trump and allowed back in under Joe Biden's administration. They're talking about the over 8 million illegals who've come across our southern border um, in an invasion of our country and an actual threat to democracy allowing that to happen. Not, That's not, what they talk about. Not talking about January 6th doesn't mean it didn't happen. You were very clear, right? There. You I said, very he, should, clear. I just you said, said he should never hold office again because of what happened on January 6th, because of what he did on January 6th. You said he should be held accountable. How has he been held accountable? Well, How voters, are you holding him accountable? Voters. All right. So what you saw at the end there is Nancy Mace attempting to change the subject from Donald Trump and go on the offensive, go on the attack, attacking Joe Biden uh, for the border. Um, Look, Republicans just defeated a border bill. So that is an elephant in the room. I think it's fair to attack or to criticize Joe Biden over the border. Um, but I don't think it's fair to change the subject from the fact that Donald Trump is the first president in American history to try to stop the peaceful transfer of power. Um, and I think that you should have to answer for that. And so the fact that Nancy Mace changed her mind and is now willing to overlook that um, speaks to her character. And I think she's clearly a political hack. OK, I want to move on now to Joe Biden. Last week, Joe Biden gave his State of the Union address on Thursday. Uh, afterwards, Guy Denton and I um, had a discussion about it. He and I both agreed that Biden did very well. I think we were both skeptical that Biden could kind of keep the Joe momentum going. Uh, the question is, was that a one off? the State of the Union, or was it the beginning of a new Joe Biden that's going to be a, more energetic? Essentially, was that the kickoff of the 2024 presidential campaign in earnest? Again, I was skeptical that Biden could keep the momentum going, but uh, here he is out Monday with, at least Monday morning uh, for me, that's when I saw it, this new ad that I think really does uh, a good job of, of checking a lot of boxes that Biden needs to check if he's going to be reelected. We'll show the clip. And then I'll talk on the other side. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. But here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. I led the country through the COVID crisis. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world. I passed a law that lowers prescription drug prices. Caps insulin at $35 a month for seniors. For four years, Donald Trump tried to pass an infrastructure law, and he failed. I got it done. Now we're rebuilding America. I passed the biggest law in history to combat climate change because our future depends on it. 
Donald Trump took away the freedom of women to choose. I'm determined to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Donald Trump believes the job of the president is to take care of Donald Trump. I believe the job of the president is to fight for you, the American people, and that's what I'm doing. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Can we do one more take? Look, I'm very young, energetic, and handsome. What the hell am I doing this for? Uh, it does make me wonder how many takes it took. I'm reminded of this famous 30 Rock episode where uh, Alec Baldwin's character, Jack Donaghy, does this video about vertical integration to be shown to NBC employees. And uh, Liz Lemon, Tina Fey's character, sees it and thinks, oh, Jack Donaghy, he can act. Let's put him on TGS live. And uh, it turns out it was like a week's worth of taping. For, for the character to be able to pull it off. So who knows uh, how many takes it took, but Joe Biden comes off looking very good there. I think this the music uh, at the top helps. Uh, you know, they say you can't tell people you're funny. You have to show them you're funny. Similarly, I, I don't think you can tell people you're spry. You have to show them that you're spry and that you're energetic. Uh, Biden looks like he's, you know, got a lot of energy there. That's not Sleepy Joe. Maybe he had a pot of coffee. I don't know. Uh, but it, it it signals someone who is energetic, certainly youthful enough to be president. Uh, I think the, the zip sweater look certainly helps. That's a younger look. Can't, it, Biden's not hiding that he's old. He's, you know, he's not St Steve Buscemi with the skateboard, you know, saying, hey, fellow young people. Uh, he's saying, look, I'm old, but I've got experience and I've got energy and I've actually gotten things done. I'm competent. Unlike my opponent, I've gotten things done. And by the way, my experience can help me get things done for you. Donald Trump's focused on his own personal aggrievements and advancement. I'm focused on you. Great message. I don't know if you can keep it up. I'm still a little skeptical, but uh, kudos for, you know, a pretty good run. Biden has had some some gaffes and, and bumps uh, along the way in the last week. But I think overall, it's been a very good week after some very bad polling numbers came out. I'm not sure what you're going to think of this solo effort. I, uh, I'm hoping to do more videos, but I don't have the time or bandwidth to do five interviews a week. Just scheduling that alone, never mind the prep, would be very difficult. And then those interviews usually go about 45 minutes. But I think a lot of days, especially Mondays, you know, coming off of the Sunday morning TV shows when there's a lot of video clips, I could check in and do some analysis like this if you like it. If you don't like it, that's fine, too. Just let me know in the comments if I should keep doing these uh, and what you like and what you don't like. Please make sure to subscribe, tell your friends, click the alerts, uh, all that stuff. Leave comments and we'll see you soon.